obviously the big big news last year and, and beginning of this year as well is uh, the president has had a, several student loan proposals, the debt forgiveness and the public service forgiveness, and, and of course the income related uh, repayment plans. And, and I noticed that you guys in your, your, your budget update had some estimates for the, the proposals announced last year, the debt forgiveness and the, the repayment pause. And then I guess there was some, some additional regs that were proposed on, on public service uh, and, and other items. I guess I was surprised though, the, the administration in January issued a federal register proposed rule to modify the existing income repayment uh, provisions. And you guys did not provide an estimate. And I, I guess, obviously you guys were in the, in the process of preparing your, your, um, your baseline at the time this was announced. And I guess I'm just curious, do you, do you have plans to provide an additional estimate of, of the income related repayment plan? And what, what's sort of the, the timing or thought on that? Um, yes, we will provide more information on the fiscal impacts of the income driven uh, repayment plan. The rule that was put forward by, um, the, by President Biden and his administration, they finalized the rule after we had finished our budgetary projections. Um, it, it is a complex rule, so we are analyzing it, um, and we will have that in time for the spring update um, of the budget baseline. So I, I anticipate us providing more information on that. Part of the complexity is that the cost of the, the changes to the income-driven repayment varies with what happens to the debt forgiveness and the debt cancellation. Um, it, it, right, that had $20,000 $20, of debt cancellation for most families, and then some families got $10,000 per student, not per family, it's per student. Um, that's in front of the Supreme Court later this month. If the Supreme Court eventually says no to that or says no in part, and that's changed, well, that would be, you know, first uh, an adjustment to the deficit going forward, right? The, the Cancellation itself was booked by the administration in fiscal year 2022. They announced it at the end of September, and that's in fiscal year 22. So it's already raising the deficit by nearly $400 billion in their calculation. Um, for last year, if the Supreme Court says no to that, well, the future deficit would be lower by you know, some amount, presumably about the same amount. Um, and then the cost of income driven repayment would vary. If the debt cancellation, cancellation is canceled, well, then there's more debt to be forgiven by the income driven repayment. And so the cost of that program would be higher. And so we're waiting both on the Supreme Court and undertaking our own analysis. And as you can imagine, we're doing it both ways. We're looking at different ways that the Supreme Court might rule. So it's a complex um, uh, area. If I can, I'll just say one, one more sentence, which is that as you mentioned, the administration undertook a series of other actions, and those are in our budget projections, and those together come to nearly $100 billion. So there's the $400 billion of the cancellation that was in fiscal year 22. There's nearly $100 billion of other things that's in fiscal year 23. And then there's the income-driven repayment, which we're still analyzing. Yeah. So I noticed you did add a new element to this year's report where you have um, a little chart illustrating the changes in the baseline due to technical assumptions. And, and one is regarding student loans. Mm -hmm. you, you essentially had the, the subsidy rate or what, what think of it as the cost of the student loan program. Basically the subsidy rate was breaking even for every dollar that we loaned out to students, we got back in present value roughly a dollar. So the subsidy rate was almost a break even. Whereas that was in last year's baseline. Whereas this year going forward, the, the subsidy rate is around 10 or 12%, which means that for every dollar for every dollar that we loan out, we only get back about 90 cents. Am I interpreting that correctly? Is that? Yeah, yes, you are. And there's a sense in which part of that is an artifact of the budgetary rules, right? By law, we are required to evaluate the student loans, you know, assuming um, current law and assuming current regulations and current administrative actions. Mm -hmm. And then we evaluate those at the treasury rate, right? So discounting the future repayments back to the present using the treasury rate, um, uh, which has, you know, has has some um, technical issues 
uh, there as well. So in the past, it looked like student loans were a profit center for the federal government, that the more loans we made, the more money the federal government made, you know, made in return. I think we've learned that that's not the case, that there's been substantial uh, forgiveness and substantial delays of the payments of the student loans you know, during the pandemic student loan payments were put on pause first by statute. And then after the statutory um, uh, period ended, um, the payment pause was uh, continued by, um, by you know, the first President Trump and then President Biden. Um, and that has a budgetary cost as well. So if, if the uh, income related repayment rules go forward, that subsidy cost is likely to be even higher, that, that that's not reflected in the current baseline. That's correct. That additional subsidy cost would have to be um, uh, put into the, the subsidy cost going forward. And that's not there yet.